So, let's start. Number 9. Fast Radio Bursts, the Cosmic Morse Code. Fast radio bursts, or FRBS, are quick, powerful flashes of radio energy coming from the depths of space. They last for milliseconds, but in that blink, they release more energy than our sun does in several days. The first one was found in 2007, and since then, astronomers have discovered hundreds. Most are one-time events. But then, a few started repeating again and again from the same exact spots in the sky. That's when things got interesting. Some fast radio bursts seem to follow patterns with rhythmic timing, almost like cosmic Morse code. Even weirder, some came from places where there's nothing, no stars, no galaxies, just empty space. Theories flooded in. Some scientists thought they came from magnetars, supermagnetic neutron stars that blast out energy. Others suggested colliding black holes, but those events can't happen over and over again, so how could something repeat with perfect precision, and still not burn out. That's when whispers of the A-word began, aka aliens. Some astronomers proposed that FRBS could be artificial signals, or maybe energy beams used to power spacecraft across galaxies. It sounds wild, but no one has a better explanation, and the repeating ones in particular behave too cleanly to be random chaos. They pulse with order, and order usually means intelligence. Every time a new FRB appears, observatories around the world race to catch it. Scientists tune in, waiting for a clue, maybe a pattern, maybe a code, maybe the first alien ping that actually repeats long enough to decode. Until then, these bursts keep flashing from the blackness like someone tapping their finger on a cosmic desk trying to get our attention. Number 8. Oumuamua, the visitor that didn't belong. In October 2017, astronomers in Hawaii detected something moving through our solar system. It wasn't like anything they'd ever seen before. It was long, cigar-shaped, and traveling at incredible speed, too fast to have originated from inside our solar system. They named it Oumuamua, a Hawaiian word meaning scout or messenger. At first, scientists thought it was just an asteroid or comet passing by, but the more they studied it, the weirder it got. For one, it had no tail or gas emissions like a comet. It also started accelerating, but not because of gravity. It was as if something was pushing it. That's when Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb dropped a bombshell. He suggested that Oumuamua might not be a rock at all, but an alien probe. Maybe a piece of technology, or even a broken spacecraft from another civilization. Naturally, most scientists laughed at that idea. But as time went on, the natural explanations started falling apart. Oumuamua, shape, brightness, and movement didn't match any asteroid or comet ever recorded. It was too thin, too reflective, and too fast. Even its rotation was weird. It tumbled through space like a piece of junk, not a natural object. It entered our solar system, zipped past the sun, and left never to return. We didn't have enough time to send a probe or even get a clear picture. It just showed up, confused everyone, and disappeared. If it really was alien, it means someone or something sent a messenger across interstellar space, and it briefly crossed paths with Earth before moving on. Maybe it was a probe exploring star systems, maybe it was debris from an old civilization, or maybe it was just a rock with perfect comedic timing. Either way, Oumuamua changed how we look at the universe because for the first time, scientists had to seriously consider the possibility that a visitor from beyond wasn't just metaphorical, it might have actually come by to take a look and left before we could even say hi. Number 7. The unexplained UFO footage when even the military admitted we don't know. In 2020, something historic happened. The US Department of Defense officially released three videos taken by Navy fighter pilots showing unidentified flying objects. The footage had already been leaked years earlier, but now the Pentagon confirmed it was authentic. These weren't hoaxes, they were real objects caught on camera. The videos showed strange shapes small, fast-moving objects that didn't look or behave like anything we've built. One zipped against the wind at impossible speeds, another rotated mid-air while hovering, and another moved so smoothly pilots couldn't even lock onto it with radar. These weren't random eyewitness stories, these were trained professionals, pilots, radar operators, and Navy personnel watching something completely unexplainable in real time. 
One pilot, seeing a spinning oval object move across the ocean, could only say, what the hell is that thing? The Pentagon later confirmed hundreds of similar sightings over the years, many of which remain unexplained. The government doesn't call them UFOs anymore. The new term is UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, which is just a fancy way of saying we still have no clue what these things are. Theories range from secret military tech to atmospheric illusions, and of course, alien craft, but none of them fully explain the data. The objects show no signs of propulsion, no heat signatures, and no sound. Some appear to defy physics entirely, turning or accelerating faster than any human-made machine could. If these things are from Earth, then someone has technology far beyond what the rest of the world knows. And if they're not, well, then they're proof that something else is flying around up there. Something intelligent. Whatever they are, they've been here for a while. Maybe they're scouts, maybe they're research drones, or maybe they're just tourists who realized Earth isn't worth the fuel. Number six. The Mars meteorite that looked a little too familiar. In 1984, scientists found a rock in Antarctica that didn't belong there. It was small, greenish, and oddly shaped, and after studying it, they discovered it came from Mars. The meteorite, named ALH84001, had been blasted off the Martian surface by an impact millions of years ago and somehow landed on Earth. That alone was cool enough. But then, in 1996, NASA scientists made a shocking announcement. Inside the meteorite, they'd found tiny structures, microscopic shapes that looked almost biological. Some even looked like fossilized bacteria. The rock seemed to contain carbon compounds that usually come from living organisms. In other words, this might have been evidence of life on Mars. The world went insane. It was the first time anyone had real physical proof suggesting life might have once existed elsewhere. Newspapers screamed, life on Mars, and the US president even gave a televised speech about it. Humanity suddenly had hope that we weren't alone, but as with most good science stories, the hype eventually faded. Many scientists argued the shapes weren't fossils, but crystal formations that just happened to look biological. Others said the chemical traces could be formed naturally. The debate went on for decades and still hasn't been fully settled. Even today, no one can say for certain whether that rock actually contained alien microbes. But here's what makes it so interesting. Even if those tiny structures weren't life, the fact that we found anything that looks alive inside a rock from another planet means we're close. Really close. Because if Mars once had water, an atmosphere, and time, all the ingredients for life, then maybe life did start there before dying off. Maybe we're just the descendants of space microbes that hitched a ride to Earth billions of years ago. Either way, one small rock from Mars made humanity question everything. It reminded us that the difference between we're alone and we're not might just be a microscope away. Number five, the strange lights of the Trappist system. In 2017, astronomers using the Spitzer Space Telescope found something extraordinary, a small dim star about 40 light years away with seven Earth-sized planets orbiting it. They named it the TRAPPIST-1 system. But what made scientists lose their minds was that three of those planets were in the habitable zone, the perfect distance from their star for liquid water to exist. Water means the potential for life. And these planets weren't gas giants, they were rocky, like Earth. Soon after, telescopes started picking up strange light patterns around the system. The brightness of the star changed slightly in ways that didn't always match the orbits of the planets. Some astronomers suggested it could be dust or debris. Others whispered a wilder idea, that the dimming patterns could be signs of something artificial. Imagine a civilization in that system building structures in orbit, maybe satellites, maybe solar collectors, big enough to slightly block the light of their sun. It's not proof, of course, but the possibility alone was enough to send chills through the scientific community. The TRAPPIST-1 system has become one of the most studied star systems in the galaxy. Scientists believe it could be the best chance we have to find alien life soon, either microbial or intelligent. The James Webb Space Telescope is already studying the atmospheres of those planets. Trying to detect gases like oxygen or methane, gases that shouldn't exist naturally unless something living is producing them. So, somewhere out there, 
seven rocky worlds orbit a tiny red star, and three of them might be alive. Whether it's just bacteria or something far more advanced, one thing's for sure, if anyone ever sends a postcard from space, it'll probably come from TRAPPIST-1. Number four, mysterious radio signals from Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is the closest star to Earth, only 4.24 light years away. In 2019, scientists at the Parkes Observatory in Australia detected something strange coming from its direction. A narrowband radio signal unlike anything naturally produced. It wasn't random static or solar noise, it was focused, steady, and lasted for several hours over multiple observations. The team named it BLC1, short for Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1. It immediately raised eyebrows because it looked a lot like a deliberate transmission. At first, scientists thought it might be human interference, some signal bouncing from satellites or electronics, but it wasn't. The signal didn't match any known Earth source. And the most mind-blowing part, Proxima Centauri has planets, one of which is in the habitable zone. Of course, researchers stayed cautious. After more analysis, they eventually concluded that BLC1 probably came from Earth after all, like some weird, unknown interference. But even that didn't kill the excitement. Because the fact that a signal so similar to what we'd expect from aliens came from the nearest star shows just how close we are to detecting the real thing. Proxima Centauri might not be sending us messages yet, but if any intelligent life does exist nearby, they'd already know about us. Our radio and TV broadcasts have been traveling toward that star for decades, so somewhere a civilization might already be picking up old Earth transmissions, watching black and white sitcoms, and wondering why humans used laugh tracks. Number three, the mystery of the dark forest, why the universe feels too quiet. There's something strange about the universe, it's massive, billions of galaxies, each with billions of stars and planets. Statistically, there should be millions of civilizations, but where are they? Why haven't we heard from anyone? This is called the Fermi Paradox, and one possible explanation is both terrifying and brilliant, the dark forest theory. It suggests that the universe is quiet because everyone's hiding. Imagine the universe as a dark forest. Every civilization is a hunter, silently walking among the trees. They don't know who's out there or what anyone's intentions are. If they reveal their position by sending out signals, even just a friendly hello, they risk being found and destroyed by someone more advanced. So everyone stays quiet. Watching, listening, it's a chilling idea. Maybe we haven't found aliens because they don't want to be found. Maybe they've seen what happens when civilizations announce themselves and decided it's safer to remain invisible. This theory flips everything we know about SETI on its head. What if our endless search for alien signals isn't a noble mission, but a dangerous one? Maybe shouting, we're here, into the galaxy is like lighting a torch in a forest full of predators. If the dark forest theory is true, then silence might not mean emptiness, it might mean fear. And maybe somewhere out there, other civilizations are listening to our radio noise and marking Earth as a planet too reckless to survive long. Number two, the discovery of exoplanets like Kepler 452b. In 2015, NASA's Kepler Space Telescope spotted something incredible, a planet that looked strangely familiar. It was called Kepler 452b, and scientists nicknamed it Earth's older cousin. Why? Because it orbits a star almost identical to our sun, sits in the habitable zone, and could have liquid water, the key to life as we know it. Kepler 452b is about 60% bigger than Earth, making it a super Earth, that means stronger gravity, thicker air, and maybe mountains taller than anything on our planet. It takes 385 days to orbit its star, almost the same as our year. Basically, it's Earth, but with a few upgrades. But here's the catch. Its star is 1.5 billion years older than ours. That means the planet could have had a huge head start. If intelligent life ever evolved there, they might be far more advanced than us. Imagine a civilization with a billion year advantage mastering space travel while we were still discovering fire. Or maybe they're long gone after destroying their own world. Kepler 452b isn't the only one though. We've now found thousands of exoplanets, many sitting in the Goldilocks zone, not too hot, not too cold, just right. 
Some orbit red dwarfs, others orbit stars like our sun. It's getting harder to believe we're unique. Scientists estimate there could be billions of Earth-like worlds in our galaxy, so if life can happen here, it can happen elsewhere too. Yet despite all these discoveries, we've heard nothing. No messages, no alien greetings, just deep, endless silence. Maybe life on Kepler 452b decided to stay quiet. Maybe they've moved beyond technology we can detect, or maybe they're looking at us right now, wondering if we're the strange ones. Either way, Kepler 452b is a reminder that the universe is ancient, massive, and full of possibilities. Thinking we're alone might be the most unrealistic idea of all. Number one, the expanding search and the possibility that they've already found us. Here's the craziest thought of all. What if we're not the ones doing the searching? What if we're the ones being observed? Earth has been leaking radio waves into space for over a century. Every broadcast, every radar pulse, every satellite signal, all of it has been spreading through the galaxy like a cosmic beacon. Any advanced civilization within a hundred light years could already know we're here. Maybe they're just waiting. Maybe they've been studying us from afar, the same way we stare at distant exoplanets. Maybe their probes are already here, silent, invisible, collecting data. Scientists like Physicist John Ball even proposed the zoo hypothesis that aliens know we exist but deliberately avoid contact like zookeepers watching animals behind glass. It's a wild idea, but it makes sense. If you were an advanced species watching Earth, would you really want to introduce yourself to creatures who can't even agree on how to recycle? For now, all we can do is keep looking and listening, because the truth might already be here, orbiting above us, buried under the static, or sitting quietly just outside our reach. The universe is too big, too strange, and too full of possibilities for us to be the only ones. Maybe the signs are already there, we're just too busy staring at our phones to notice. Thank you for watching and sticking till the end. We've got plenty more videos coming in the future. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. See you in the next one.